Whenever we follow other photographers on social media, we never see the whole truth. This is very typical of social media in general, is that it's only the best of life that is shown. And when it comes to photography, no one wants to share their bad photos, only the top little bit. So in this episode, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna show you a variety of shoots from this past year, and to show you what is really under the hood when it comes to working as a real estate photographer, even in Southern California, where yes, I do shoot a lot of luxury homes. I'm gonna show a couple of those, but I'm also gonna show you the challenges because there's somewhat of a paradox in that sometimes the houses that are the least expensive can be the most challenging to shoot. So I'm gonna go through a variety of that stuff. Now, some of these houses won't be the best and I'm not going to make fun of anybody's house. People lived, loved, and laughed there. This was the home that some children grew up in and they'll have fond memories of forever. It's only to talk about what really happens behind the scenes, some of the challenges that I take into account to then make these look their best, which is one of my goals and it should be yours too. If you're gonna be photographing people's homes, remember that one basic rule is that this was someone's home. Somebody has memories there. Don't take shortcuts on it, do the best you can. But I wanna go through a variety of them so you get a really good idea of the truth behind the scenes when it comes to doing flambient. I'll start with this. This is a finished shot. Just go in here full screen so you can take a look at it. And by the way, if you ever want to do this in Lightroom, just press F on your keyboard, F to go back out. Anyways, going in here full screen, this is a finished flambient shot that was delivered. And once again, this is kind of a luxury house. It was a mid-century modern remodel. And I'll start with this. We're going to work our way through some real challenges here in just a little bit. But with this, you can see what happened when I took the ambient shot. Now this is using the typical flambient blending. I'll show just a very quick highlight highlight of that. And if there's anything that I missed that you don't quite understand, please leave me a comment where I can maybe point you in the right direction. Also, a lot of this will be covered in various books in my real estate photography series, but feel free to leave me a comment either way. Maybe I can also introduce another video to cover some of these things that you might not be aware of. We can see a lot of the typical color challenges by doing ambient where we've got a lot of green that's on the walls here coming in from outside. There's some lights over here in this adjoining room that has some orange cast. So it's not a white balance issue, this is a color issue, and that's why we introduce flash. So using then flash, you can see the first thing I did was I have a light that's behind me because this is a challenge because of this beam that's up here on the ceiling. I can't cast too much light from just one light, I need to distribute it. So what I do is staying at the camera, I can then adjust the flash power until I find something that I like, and that was this. So that's pretty good, and by the way too, even though you can use auto white balance, a lot of times with these mirrorless cameras, I find it just easier to do manual white balance. It's entirely up to you. I show how to do both in the uh, Mastering Flambient, that book that I've got a link to that in the description for the video. But it's a very simple thing to do. It can always be changed in post when you're shooting in RAW. But here, by setting up first, hey, I know this is how I wanna light this shot. Then I just move the light to the other side, and then I take some shots. This is one where I was holding it, angled a little bit better back so I didn't have as much light bloom on the ceiling, and but it was basically the same power. So once you figure out where your flash power is, it's pretty easy to put that over then on the other side for your composite. I did some window pulls, didn't need them. To take a look then, if you're not familiar with this technique, just real quick here in Photoshop, what was involved. This is a during the process type of shot. So just to show you the basics of it, when I started at the bottom, here was that one flash shot put the other flash shot on top of it, masked myself in with this. Then I added some ambient to have some realism in there. You can see this is with it, without it. This is the key of the flambient technique. Then I added in a, a color fill layer just to fix a few little spots here, and then the uh, desaturation layer for the ceiling to really help that out. But when we go back over to Lightroom, we can see that there was a little bit more that was added to that. And what I did was for this particular shot, I edited out what was over here, a reflection. So this was coming in from the skylights up here, but whatever it is, it just really bugged me. So even when I was doing my flash shots, it showed up and this was just a preference of mine. You don't have to do it, but when it comes to luxury homes like this, I just felt it was, it was an easy fix. So I just removed it. Obviously I also added fire. And then if you notice too, I added just a black fill layer over top of the TV. Super, super easy thing to do. Anyways, if any of this is unfamiliar to you, just leave me a comment so I can point you in the right direction or maybe post another video on how 
some of this is done. So this was a one shot here and that was pretty easy to do. But one other thing I like to do in houses like this is to have a show it all shot. And that's what this is here. Now, you look at this and you go, well, that's not really a super sexy composition, but this is something that realtors will want to be able to show connectivity and relativity. So being able to see that, yes, you've got this mid-century modern kitchen over here. There's a dining area over here. You've got this living area. This is how it would look. They can assume that it's from the foyer, but either way, this is a capture it all shot. Now this had its challenges because Look at this, this is a mess. HDR photographers can say all they want about trying to correct this, but there are different color temperatures throughout this. There's so much ambient light coming into the kitchen and ambient light is extremely soft. You will never get the same amount of contrast that you will out of here. That way you will have the sharpness. The only way you're gonna get something with this type of result is to use flash. And it's very easy to do with the flambient method. So after taking my ambient shot, then I start introducing flash. Now. You know that I like to do composites if you've seen this in my lighting guide. And by the way, this captured all shot too. That's some stuff I talk about in my book, Shot Lists. But as I start working through, you know, well, let's up that flash power because I started here, it wasn't enough. And I can see that now the foreground is lit well enough and now I need to light the rest of this house. So I introduce a light over here until I get it to where it's at a level that I like and I stepped then over here on the other side and I fired a speed light handheld over here. So three lights involved, one near camera, which is always your key light, and then these others are fill light. Now, that's just really to light the dining room and it over connects into here. So then what I do, I lowered the flash power, I like this, and then after doing that, I stepped into the kitchen and you can see I'm lighting it over here. So this gets me flash that I can use on this side. I eventually go over to the other side, I flash that, and all along the way, I'm just adjusting flash power. I turn it down, I turn it up, you know, to where I find, then I've got a variety of footage that I can use. Here then, flashing the other side, I also move this light so I have something I can composite in. Pretty easy to do uh, once you get used to doing these flash composites, but it gives you such a strong, impactful result. This is much better, and like I said, there's no way, using HDR, you're gonna get the same type of sharpness and contrast out of this or the color correctness throughout the entire frame without doing a lot of special editing. So this is the last of the luxury shots that I'm really going to show here. I'm going to show one more from this house, but the idea here is that this is the best of the best. This was easy. Luxury is easy. Look, all that I had to do was after taking this ambient shot here, I just had to hold a speed light above the camera. I had another light over here, and then I just did a window pull. It's so easy because the colors are just such an easy thing to work with. A lot of the modern builds are that way. It really doesn't get much easier than this. That's why when you see all this stuff that's shared on social media of you know these beautiful houses, it wasn't the technical skill necessarily that went into creating it. It was the house itself. This was super quick. It only took maybe a minute to do the entire shot and set that up and take it. And it really didn't take long to edit it either. Let's though take a look at the kitchen. It's a little more challenging. So this is kind of that capture it all shot like I talk about in shot lists. And here I'm trying to show relativity that yeah, you've got living area here. And yes, I do window pulls. And why in luxury homes like this would I do window pulls? Yeah, it's a bit of dirt out here and whatnot. One, the clients expect it. Now, I'm not showing crystal clear views out here, but they do wanna show that one, you don't have neighbors, this is your property. So anyways, doing this was a big challenge. And once again, there's no way, I don't care what you say, HDR will not do this. And if you're doing flamby, you know what I'm talking about. There's no amount of ambient brackets that will be able to get you this sharp of a photo. So anyways, after taking this ambient shot, then once again, I start working with my key light until I get the power that I like, and then I start introducing other their lights. So here's this one here, and once I do, and I like the power of that that I set between both lights, the one near the camera, the key, and this particular fill, then I start walking around and doing my flashy, flashy stuff. Step to the other side, do that, and then all I did 
after doing that at various powers, I just keep turning the thumb wheel. You can see I've put my thumb there near my uh, speed light on the wheel there. I just keep turning it, turning it, turning it, and, and flashing away. I don't even bother looking at an iPad with a cam ranger. Just do that real quick. And then I just shot a few uh, window poles, which are down uh, here. And that was just to get that view outside. But doing that then, I've got enough footage where it's easy enough to do minimal flambient blending. I've got better control of the color. I've got all this great stuff. But once again, this was easy. Yeah, you see me walking around flashing and some of that may seem confusing. It's stuff I cover in my lighting guide. But the fact of the matter is it was easier with a better high quality photo compared to trying to use this a bunch of ambient brackets. The colors are way off in here. This is very typical. So what there's a whole genre right now and a hashtag to this whole no lights thing where, well, to solve the problem of color in HDR, just shut the lights off. Now you can't do that. That's just impossible. This under cabinet lighting is an expensive feature. So is everything else. So I need to be able to show that. And you can look over here and go, oh, you know, Nathan, you got a little bit of color down here. Well, yeah, that was also in the ambient shot because there was a whole bunch of under cabinet lighting. So the same thing going up here, we want to be able to show that there's above cabinet lighting. All these things are selling features that rely on lights. Now I could have changed the color down here with the color layer on these. That's not a big deal. But the point is, is that I have much more control using Flambient if I use lights and then a little bit of ambient uh, luminance on top of that. So this though was luxury stuff. Let's get into the tough stuff, which is not luxury. Here's a prime example. Now, once again, I'm not going to condemn somebody's home. I'm not going to talk ill about it, but this is a delivered photo that I gave for a particular shoot. Now, they hired me to do this because they like the work that I do. If you take a look at the ambient, yeah, you know, you could HDR that. Good luck with all the colors. You also have a whole bunch of mess here in the shower. So what looks better is if I just take a flash shot and blend it with some ambient. Now, I tried some shower pops in case I need them because they go off really quick. No big deal. But in the end, I just mixed a little bit of ambient with this flash shot. And this is what I had. So this is one of the worst case scenarios because yeah, it's an older bathroom with carpet on the floor and it's got all kinds of issues. But once again, this was somebody's home and it needs to be shown in the best light, literally. Now, when you walk in and you see this, you just may cringe, but don't. So there was an elderly person who had lived in this house ever since it was originally built in the 1950s. And there was things that just couldn't be kept up. Now, I really dug, by the way, some of these fixtures, the little hands holding the shelf, the little arms like hand, holding onto handlebars for the toilet paper. But obviously, this is a damaged cabinet, and it's not exactly my taste, uh, but it was their taste that goes back a long time. They passed away, needed to be able to sell this house. So I walked in here, and there were some other challenges here I'll show in just a second. I just put a mag mod on a 8200 and with very little flash power, flashed inside of it, got my little flash shot, took an ambient shot, just blended a little bit of luminosity in it, not much, moved on to the next shot. So there was another challenge though in here, and this was the master bath, very small master bath, but you can see I've also got green up here. Now you would think, well, why didn't you just leave it as an ambient shot? It's not that much, uh, you know, really of a showcase bathroom. I can hardly even show all of it in one shot. Well, that's because the ambient didn't do me any favors. Ambient light is not your friend. And if you, work, if you go by the mantra that you can let ambient do most of the work for you, you're gonna be very disappointed. So what I do is in this case, I just shot a regular flash shot. So I get correct colors and light up just about everything else, get even lighting. And then I did some shower popping. So I went into the shower and I just boom, boom, boom. I'm just going back and forth on each side real quick, just a whole bunch of different flash power until I found a couple that I liked, which was here and here. And then I can blend those together. Now you might be thinking, well, you're casting green because I'm bouncing off of that. Well, that's okay. You just adjust the color later. But quite honestly, if you're casting color that's already in a space, then it's no big deal. I'm only gonna be using it for this shower and that's green to begin with. So it's okay to cast those colors in those areas. Anyways, when that was done, this is what I had. And it was much better than just trying to use the ambient shot. Another part of the house that was a bit of a challenge was here because when you take a look at the ambient, well, there's just a whole variety of issues. So luxury homes have distributed lighting that are typically designed by either an interior designer or an architect where they have ceiling cans to allow a continuous flow of lighting throughout the space. Well, 
A lot of standard homes don't have that, especially this had this add-on in the back. You can see I don't have really much in the way of ambient that's gonna do me any favors. I can't rely on ambient for most of this. So what I do is I set up a light that was over here and it was bouncing off a portion of the white wall. It's a little bit off because it was also capturing a little bit of color off here, easily corrected in post. And then I just started flashing inside here. So I just adjusted different flash power. I'm just standing there doing that. And then I can just selectively decide where I want the ambient light to be. So in this case, I just added some ambient luminance over here into the hallway, just a little bit across the beams to fix that, but really nothing here. The rest of it was just some standard adjustments. So once again, though, you can't in houses like this, these are challenges. You can't rely on ambient light to do the hard work for you. You gotta do the work yourself. It's best to just light it yourself and then add ambient luminance where you need it the most. And same house, this also has a challenge because the kitchen has this blue tile ceiling. Once again, don't be laughing at this. This is stuff you come across and it's a challenge. So what are you gonna do? Well, if I relied on ambient, it will do me no favors at all. That's a bat cave kitchen, I call this, where it's so dark in the distance it does you no favors because you're gonna be placing your light near a camera. Well, it turns it even darker. So once again, though, what I'm doing is I'm figuring out the uh, flash power for my key light. And then once I do, I was stepped into the kitchen with this AD200 with a mag mod mag sphere on it at a very low height. And that allows more of an omnidirectional light, so I'm not really bouncing. It is bouncing a little bit, but it really is more omnidirectional. And then after doing some flash powers, I just moved it over to the other side. Blend those together and really not much in the way of ambient produce this. And if you look really closely, you can see this does look flashy then when we get in here to take a look at it 100%. And the same way over here, you can see there's a harsh shadow that was left here. That's from me flashing, but this in itself was better than the alternative, which was to try to use some type of HDR blending using this. It just wouldn't work. And no matter what I would do, if I said, well, let's adjust the white balance on this, yeah, I get a better color out of it, but no amount of HDR photography is gonna be able to get you sharp results that look like this. So let's take a look at a luxury house, but at first glance, it doesn't look like it because it will need some updating. So this was a finished shot that I did for this. This was out on Lake Sherwood. And if you, that name sounds familiar, yes, that's the golf course out here that would have uh, the PGA tournament sometimes out here. So very expensive house out here, but it hadn't really been updated in a very long time. So when we take a look at the ambient shot, what I had here, well, it really wasn't giving me any favors. And you can see I really did a bunch just to get the ambient in place because it really looked like this, a ton of light disparity. And you can see if I were to, when I took this, if I were to expose to the right, it would even be worse. So what I do in cases like this, before I take that ambient shot over, it's a very bad case, I'll extend the dynamic range. And what I do, I show this also in Mastering Flambient, is I'll reduce the highlights, I'll bring up the shadows, and I may even bring down the whites because the whites is actually an area of clipping. That's the farthest right portion of the histogram. And then I can get something that's a little bit better to work with, but either way, I can't really rely on just ambient alone, even in a bracket, to try to get this type of result. This has a flash that's hidden around the corner to be able to show that this connects into what is, believe it or not, that entire wing was the master suite everything. Now I close the bathroom door here. There's no need to highlight that. It's just going to draw the eye there. Did I do any window pulls here? Yeah, I did because there was a necessity of being able to show something to the outside. Do they look like they were pictures hung on a wall? No, not at all. It's just be able to show that yes, this does go to the outside. But once again, it was better than just trying to work off this type of ambient, which once again, if I expose to the right, would be this type of ambient. Let's take a look at another angle of this room which was more of a challenge. Now, this is the delivered photo that I took, that I processed, but when we take a look at the ambient shot itself, well, this is what we were up against. Yeah, I could correct the, the white balance here, but you can see it's just so flooded out. And this is with me also reducing the highlights. You can see I then also reduced the whites. So this is how it looked. And if I were to really take this to expose to the right, you can see it's really just a bit of a mess. So instead, 
I did a variety of flashing. So I have a key light near camera, it was an 8400 in this case, and I'm just doing a ceiling bounce and I also had then an 8200 tucked in over here. Before firing that, I made sure that everything looked good on that. Then I started firing off the 8200 that was in the opposite room, and then after I'm satisfied with those, then I walk around and do a bunch of popping. You can see I'm just hand holding a speed light here. I'm mostly after color um, to try to get that. And I just then went back and forth and did a couple different ones where I'm flashing, yeah, maybe I should be back over here, trying a few different things. Also going over here to light up this side. But the key here, big key here for houses like this is when you're shooting toward the window to get this type of result, don't rely on ambient wholly, but you can rely on ambient to some degree. So you can use a bit of ambient to try to lighten up some of the spots that might not have gotten quite as much light, but you can't do that in an area like this. You need to have enough color in there, and that's why you have to flash at least something inside there so you have something to work with, and then you can paste all these together. And here was a recent challenge too. And once again, I'm not here to make fun of anybody's houses. They actually love this color, and green is my favorite color, but I wouldn't use it in my kitchen. But this presents a big challenge on how you're going to photograph something like this. So this, to be able to get this done, if you look really closely, the ceiling is not white. It's actually brown. Now, I lightened that color up so it wasn't so heavily brown. Let's take a look though at the footage involved. So I took an ambient shot. You can see this would be very difficult to use as it is to try to even bracket something with ambient to do HDR. So yeah, I could correct the white balance on this and the color is not so bad, but the disparity of light throughout here is just intense. So instead what I did was I started flashing. So now you can start seeing some of the problems. What I did, I immediately knew that I'd have to use two different lights. Each one is an 8200 Pro that was in a shoot through umbrella. The one is by the camera, the other one's over here, and that's why I'm getting these shadows that are cast over here above the sink, and then also over here that is above the dining room table. So with those then, I would just keep changing different flash power, and I'm just using the remote that's on top of the camera. This is the one that I settled on, that I liked, that I could use, and sure, when you add some ambient luminance in there, some of this could be off in color, but it's easy to correct with a color fill layer. So I just used that with some ambient, and then I was able to get this finished shot. And there might be still a little bit of discoloration, a little bit of shadowing up here, but quite honestly, this is a much better picture than what somebody could have taken with their cell phone, let alone if you tried to then do something with HDR bracketing with something like this. You just get something that's extremely sharp. This, in fact, was almost all flash. Just a little bit of ambient luminance added in, and notice there were no window poles. This didn't need window poles. I don't need to see the neighbor of, you know, on the other side that would be showing through that kitchen window. There's nothing really to show out here for this particular shot, you know, and also I've got a little bit of stuff going on here with a shadow behind the chair. And that's caused from that shoot through umbrella, which is causing a harsher shadow, same way over here. Now, is that a problem for me? Well, no. So in comparison, there are still other shadows. They're just in different places. So when it comes to stuff like that, I don't bother with it. You know, you post something like this on a Facebook group for like real estate photography, and you'll have a whole slew of photographers pointing all this stuff out to you. It doesn't matter. Right? So for this house, it is much better, fits a higher quality standard than if you had to work with just the ambient alone. Now, I wanna show another angle. Let's move over here real quick. And, and here we can see the big challenge that I was up against. So here, if we take a look at the ceiling, for instance, let's just go in here 100%, and you can see that up here, there's two different colors of ceiling. You can see that it's brown, actually, in the kitchen, and it's kind of a gray, some type of color that goes into the living room that attaches to this layout. Now, here, if I were to use just the ambient shot, this is what I was up against exposing to the right. And there is no amount. You can even see here, I lowered the highlights on by 89. If I take that to zero, you can see that's what I was up against. And there is no amount of fiddling you could do with this to try to get something workable. It's just gonna be way too soft. So what I did was with a shoot through umbrella, I just changed power enough until I got something like this. Now, what I ended up doing 
is a typical two-sided composite. So I walked over here, I lit this, I walked to the other side and lit this, and I got a harsh shadow. So what I ended up doing was just using this particular shot to edit in the far end, so I got this over here. But the biggest thing was really just getting the right amount of color and making sure I had enough light where I didn't have it at all from the ambient. So I was able to then add a little bit of that ambient to get this effect. Now, in this case, yes, I did window pulls. And why? Because we need to be able to show that, yes, this does connect out to the outside. Now, this isn't your Lake Sherwood house that's going to have a beautiful backyard and PGA tournaments played in your backyard. But what I did is to be able to show it in its best light, since it doesn't show any neighbors, took two window poles. Did one at this exposure to get the right side of the window. And then I changed the exposure so I could see the outside view and I flashed this. And you can see what that exposure is going to be by using a mirrorless camera, watching what goes on the back screen. And then I just hit it. So using those two window poles and then using that uh, bit of ambient that I mixed in there, then I have this finished product. It's much better once again than trying to use something with just ambient like here. This was another challenge because we're gonna step inside this bathroom and see what was a big challenge to shoot, but using Flambient, it wasn't really that bad. So this was the ambient shot for the bedroom and sure, I could say auto white balance that to correct it and I could mess around with it. HDR could probably do an okay job with this and it would be acceptable. But you know what? I just took that ambient shot and a quick flash shot just with the flash over my head with a speed light hand holding it and blending that together I get this. I mean, it's just so easy, right? There was no blending. The editing time was almost next to nothing. Just use that 50-50 flambient technique that I show in other videos, talk about throughout the books, and it just took seconds. So this was nothing. But let's go into the bathroom. This is where the real challenge came in. So this was the delivered photo that I did for this bathroom. Now it was a very tight spot. So there's a couple different angles I did. I'll show you the other one. This is just one of them. And you can see here, I've got a really nice view inside the shower. I've got really crisp looking cabinets. Yes, some of the cabinets were damaged, but that's to be expected. And this is a listing photo. It's not something necessarily for my portfolio. It's something to show this in its best light. So if we take a look at the ambient shot of this, we can see that, yeah, that just would have a tough time trying to do this with HDR because no matter what we did like here, I took this ambient shot just for this example and did a whole bunch of adjustments, basically extending the dynamic range like you would with HDR. No matter what you do, and even if you try to do color layers inside this shower, you've got so much reflections, it's nothing compared to when you do the flambient technique. So in this case, after shooting my flash like I did here, and hey, I've got correct colors and everything, well, I do a shower pop. I just stand over there and go, ta-da, poof and I've got a shower prop. Now, I will also walk over to the other side so that I can make sure that I don't have any reflections in this side of the glass. But putting that together then, it's, it's pretty simple, just doing the flambient blending, editing that shower pop in there, and we get this much better looking photo. So if we take a look at the other end over here, so when I turned around and I shot the other side here, then this was more of a showcase just to show, yes, I wanna show all the critical counters, bathtub and shower. And in this case, the house on the other side does show up. Could I have whitened that out better? I think I could have. And in this case, I would probably allow a lot more ambient to come through here in the flambient blending, but the client liked it. This did not need a window pull unless you really needed to remove flash reflections. But if we take a look at the ambient shot, once again, we're up against this muddy reflective mix inside the shower. I'll just correct that white balance just real quick. And no matter what, it's still not gonna get the same results when you do flash and then a shower pop. So what I did was the typical, hey, I'm just holding the speed light above the camera, do my uh, flash shot real quick, and then I just walk over and start doing some shower popping. And the shower pop that I ended up using for this, I used this one here to do this side so I could edit that out. And then I walked over to the other side and did this. So between those two shots, I had enough shower pop material to then add that in. So once again, when that was done, this is the result that I had. So this was much better than trying to work off something that used ambient. But was it a challenge? Yeah, the space itself was challenging, what I had to work in. Uh, the ambient light also didn't do me a lot of favors. 
sure, I love the ambient light that's coming across the tub, but I can't rely on the ambient for this shower. And once again, if you're relying on ambient to do all the work for you, then you're going to be missing out. Instead, by using flash properly, I'm able to get a better shot. And just real quick, taking a look at another one here. This is from a different house. And you can see here, I've got a discolored ceiling. Well, it's not really discolored, it's just not white. But this is very typical where they'd mix a little bit of white with some of the paint color. It's also got that faux sponge uh, type of dabbing that they do on the paint here. Um, so when I did the ambient shot, you can see ambient does me no favors here either. I can't rely on this ambient. You can see there's light coming in reflecting off of here. So instead, I just take a flash shot, that's done. It's taken care of. I get correct colors and you might be looking at this going, well, what did you do for bouncing? I could have bounced my flash off the white door, but I just held it right above camera, let it go, and just adjusted the white balance accordingly. And then I just stepped in, and then I did this, so I needed to edit myself out. A little bit of bloom up here, that's optional. But when it was done, it was this. Very simple thing to do. At this property, though, there were some other challenges that didn't even involve flash. At this condo complex, they uh, had a couple amenities. This was their workout room. They wanted a picture of this. I'm not gonna bring flash in there. I'm walking around trying to get done real quick. I'm just using my exterior camera, which that uh, you've seen before, I use like a 20 millimeter lens on it. And I just did a bunch of brackets and I'm just using the timer <laughs> on my, I'm not even using a shutter release, really, so just using the timer on my camera. And I just take a variety of photos at different exposures and then using uh, luminosity masking, doing that exposure blending, I'm able to put this together. And by the way, I have a video on how I do this for large uh, complexes. So look for that video uh, link down in the description for this video. Same thing I did when it came to their sauna. So this was the delivered picture that I had, but it was a variety of this, 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 and this. I'm not gonna take the time walking around condo amenities with a flash and setting up stuff. I'm gonna get this stuff in ambient real quick, and I can really massage that well enough to get them something workable. Would it have been better with flash? Sure, is it worth the money to do that? No, not really, and this is a big key to Flambient is that sometimes Flambient is a must. Now, I use Flambient for probably 98% of everything I do because I also shoot for designers. This particular shot here, this was for a designer, and I used a variety of different flash. You can see all the footage down here. This was the ambient shot from it, and they had me eventually remove. Then you can see there was this light up here, and that was a challenge because of all these uh, cabinets that it was blocking, but I did that with just removing that uh, up here and masking in some cabinets, a lot of editing work, but that stuff pays by the hour for these type of shoots. More importantly, it's paying me by the hour to go around and do my flashy, flashy stuff to get everything that I need to. And this was just your typical, hey, I've got key light near the camera. I'm using a fill light to do a composite back and forth. I can do window pulls if I want, or I can also add enough ambient to blow enough of that out, which in this case I did so that it's, it's not so glaring and attracting. But the fact of the matter is, the amount of work that you do, whether it's flambient, whether it's HDR, whether it's just all ambient, is it has to fit within the reasonable time and the budget that you're working with. So I've been using Flambient for many years and it's not difficult for me to fire off shots like this in no time, get them done. If I'm working for a designer, take a little more time to make sure I get all the right footage. But if you're struggling still and it's taking you too much time to do Flambient, I would really encourage you to work to really try to improve that. Take your time down. I've got a uh, link to another video down in the description called the uh, Two Minute Rule to Flambient and to try to help you reduce that time to make it more profitable. But once again, by doing this, we're seeing a variety of stuff. This was the great stuff here but I do get called on a lot of stuff here. And why? Because I can show it better than HDR photographers can. And when the five to $10 million listings come up, I get those too. And by the way, this particular house was an all day project. This was a money-making opportunity because we didn't just do photos, we also did a virtual tour. We did a 360 even using flash. We did video on this, we did drone, we built a website. So this was a great gig to have and I would have not gotten this gig if it wasn't for shooting the other properties which I can show my clients that no matter what it is, I can make it shine. And you can too. Work on your skill, practice this stuff, do not get discouraged no matter what it is that you face and you will be able to succeed in your career as you keep advancing your skills.